UK is right now going through transition. We have Miss Theresa May who will be uh, visiting India in the early part of November. Uh, what do you think um, India and you can, can do to further their ties at this juncture? You have interest in both regions. You know, where can they grow together, especially you know, given the transition that's happening in UK? With we have to see what is the expertise from Britain. They are very good in making, designing, structuring, management skills, management skills. And the GST is a good example. From where did it come? I remember our experts from different ministries used to come there to see how the VAT was done. What are the things we have to protect? Similarly, Britain can offer quite a lot. Earlier, they were restricted with the EU. Now, if they are out, from EU, they will have independence, they will have no choice but to enhance their relationship with India. And the growth can come from everywhere, although they may not be able to invest money, but they have British companies. If they find viable projects, they can. They can structure. Now look, they have taken so much interest in smart cities. They will take interest in make in India on the defense side, on digitization, on all the programs what Mr. Modi has initiated. They are good at it. So that sort of sector will keep on growing. Given the fact that uh, Prime Minister Modi's government is completing two and a half years, which is the halfway mark to the tenure, uh, for somebody who understands the global environment, has perception really changed for, of, of doing business in India? He has totally changed the face of India in the international market. And we feel proud abroad when we say we are Indians and Mr. Modi today can be accepted as the best prime minister of, for the world. And he is doing excellent. Only my suggestion will be that his team should also move in the same pace and faster than what Mr. Modi wants, because his vision is very good for the country. He has new ideas, he has new thoughts, he has gone internationally to all the countries, he has built up excellent relationships. So, the rest is to them and to the private sector. Yeah, I think we have to give some time, yeah. well, because you know, system sir? processes, hmm. uh, which is getting delayed, I think we have to give some time to see how things will change. But what next, uh, uh, you know, does the business community really expect? Because GST is uh, now in the works uh, in, in terms of the implementation process, bankruptcy code is in place, uh, FDI in key sectors, defense, you know, has been opened up, uh, where of course you formed a joint venture, bank MPMS uh, is being tackled. What should they do next? Okay, let me tell you. They should remove uncertainties like GST. Not that it has been cleared, they should put it into action faster. Say, when I manufacture certain vehicles with the engines of BS4, if they timely don't bring in, the manufacturer, the investor gets into trouble. You know, proactive actions have to be taken, that if this doesn't happen, then what is the next? And also, Resolve bottlenecks also they purpose. should form shell companies, special purpose vehicle companies mm -hmm. for all the projects where the investment from abroad is needed. Mm -hmm. So when the investor comes, there are all the clearances available, they sell the company. An and then the foreign investor will have no grievance. It will also help. They have not to run around for various clearances. Being an NRI, I would also say that NRIs who have been the natural resource of India and even in the most difficult days, they stood by and even now 70 billion of foreign investment Every is coming. Year they should do something. 
for them, at least treat their investment at par with the Indians. The stressed assets business, you've been very vocal about it, that you know, you're big on it, you're very bullish on the stressed assets in India. Uh, what are your thoughts on the potential here? Because it seems like, sir, everybody is, uh, you know, really trying to get a piece of the pie. You have so many distressed test, uh, debt investors overseas who are looking at India, big conglomerates which are looking at bad assets in India. Uh, but there are challenges. What's the way out? Shall I tell you a simple thing? There have to be certain guidelines being given to the institutions. A simple guideline that they can take a haircut till the project is presented in a viable form. Any new investor who is coming, he, unless the project is viable, why will he put money? Why will he put money? Now, once they do this, automatically the stressed projects, the investments will start. I can tell you all this from my own experiences. We started, we wanted to go in. The institutions are concerned because if they do it, they will say, oh, why did you give so much haircut? And then there is an inquiry. Because internationally, sometimes you get 60% haircut. The same thing is in the ministries. A good mind has to be applied now. All the policies what have been made, how to get them implemented, uncertainties be removed. You are in a country, at the moment, it is the best destination in the world to invest here. Because the situation in US economy is slow, stagnant, 1% GDP. If you go to UK, uncertainties, with this Brexit, EU is doing very bad. If you come further into Asia, you can see China, how the GDP is growing down. It's a good example, again, to what you said. Chinese started expanding, expanding. So what happens? Now they can see the impact of it. At the moment, India has the best opportunity so everyone is looking towards India. Unfortunately, we have not been able to gear up ourselves to attract these foreign direct investments. Because when people come here, they expect the same Western system. But here in clearances, although a lot Mr. Modi has been doing, we have, we have a very good Prime Minister. He is a visionary, he has a lot of energy, he is doing everything. But to change the culture, the systems and the procedures of last 60 years, it takes a lot of time. Yes. I used to talk, you know, on air about Ashok Leland being at 10, 15 rupees and today the very stock is at 100, it's gone up to 110. No, from as well. 1 rupee it has gone up to <laughs> yeah. but So let completely me tell you, changed, it is, it is, patience pay. It is cyclic. Now, yeah. Our younger generation, they are professionals. So what they do? They want to have a business plan. They want to see the viability. They make all the studies. Now what does the management do? When they want everything, to, anything to be got cleared from the board, mm -hmm. they will present you in such a manner hmm, that it looks very rosy. And it becomes very difficult to say, don't invest. Ashok Leland had a good growth. Mm. The management was not focused. Mm. They went into diversifications. Mm. They said, okay, let us put a plant in Germany. Let us go in such and such thing. Mm. And they started with 13, 14 new companies. Mm. So the concentration disappeared. So when the third generation came, the decision was taken that we should be only in commercial vehicles. If we want to do something else, it has to be a separate unit. The cycle will but, come back. But we should not. So if you take my version of this, <laughs> I'll take it in a different way. That when those decisions were taken, along with the management, the board took that decision. They thought that that was right decision. But the planets were wrong. <laughs> it went into the wrong spin okay. and finally when the right time came they took the right decision to exit <laughs> and the company 
from same 14 15 rupees right to 210 <laughs> rupees that's right? true that's true find us on facebook at facebook.com/etnow and don't forget to click the like button you can also follow us on twitter at @etnowlive to stay updated with all our programming hit the subscribe button on our youtube channel by logging on to youtube.com/user/etnow